Well, welcome. My name is Jason. I'm one of the pastors here, and we are honored that you've chosen to start your year off by worshiping with us here at Quad City Christian Church. I want to welcome all of those joining us online from whenever and wherever you are. So grateful to have you, as well as all of those out in Prescott Valley. For those in Prescott, thanks for uh, braving the snow with us today. If there is a uh, attendance chart like many of you had in a Sunday school class that you were growing up, you just need to know you got one of the gold stars. Like that, so good on you today. So glad that you're here. If you're a newcomer with us, we're so honored to have you. And this is actually a pretty good day for you to join us. We do this thing every year at the beginning, the first Sunday of the year, we set aside and we call it our family meeting. And this is an opportunity for me as one of your pastors here, just to give a report on the church to those of you who are a part of our church, to share some wins from where we've been and to set some vision for where we are going. And so that's what we're going to do today. Um, so I throw out this caveat. So if you walk out of here today or if you turn off your screen today and you say, that wasn't much of a sermon, I just want you to know I agree, okay? Okay. This is not going to be much of a sermon. It is more of a reporting uh, for you guys uh, with some vision cast thrown in there for us. Um, I invite you to come back next week because hopefully next week there's going to be a good sermon. Next week we're kicking off a brand new series where we're going to go line by line through the book of the Bible called James. We're calling the series Beyond Belief. And so one of the core values, as we'll talk about it in a few minutes here, is that we teach the Bible, which means... We're just going to grab our Bibles next week and start in James chapter 1, verse 1, and we're going to spend 11 weeks walking through the text of the book of James. So hopefully you'll come back and join us for that. But today, again, we got some reporting that we want to do. Uh, always uh, share some metrics for the church. Uh, these metrics that I share are not the goal, all right? So when you hear these, please know that these are not... The goal, there are some numbers that we look at that I want to share with you to help us understand how we're doing as a church, to look at some trends and to share some wins. But again, they're not the goal. They do help us to see a little bit of what God's doing among us, but we'll get to the goal in just a moment. Here's 23 year in review. Just to let you know, last year we had a, the largest attendance ever on one weekend was our Easter last week. So it was the largest ever here at Quad City where over 2,300 people joined us in Easter weekend. And if you happen to be here at the 11 o'clock on Easter, then you were a part of the most crowded service that we've ever had. We had over 600 people crammed into a room that only fits 500. And there was like 100 floating around everywhere else. It was a pretty crazy Sunday, but it was a lot of fun for me. Uh, the largest non-holiday attendance we ever had was also this past year. So uh, just a random August day, we had 1,550, which was really cool. And then our average for the year was 1,353. Uh, that does not include those of you who are online. So many of you are on there every week. I know a few of your names, but this is, there's 188 devices. And we say devices because we don't know actually how many people they are. How, when you turn your YouTube on, on your, in your living room, we don't know if there's one person watching or six, who knows? So, but, but 188 devices, uh, typically join us live every week. And again, that doesn't even include those of you who might miss a Sunday and then watch later on Tuesday. We don't even know how many people those are, but it's really cool. So welcome to all of those online, wherever you are. And so glad to have you with us today. Uh, our Discovering Quad City, we had 189 people attend Discovering Quad City, which is really great. For those of you who don't know, Discovering Quad City is uh, kind of the over view of who we are as a church, why we exist, why we're here. It's really a great first step for somebody who's wanting to get connected to our church. In fact, it happens on the first Sunday of every month. It's going on right now here at the Prescott campus. Uh, in Prescott Valley, you'll have it coming up here in a few weeks. But I encourage you that if you have not done Discovering Quad City yet, and you're trying to figure out what's my next step at Quad City, this is your next step. And so you can fill out the app or stop at Connection Central and somebody will help you get plugged in. Great that we had 
189 people go through that this year. This is even more astounding to me. We had 402 first time connections this year. So whenever our host comes up and says, hey, if you're new here, fill out this form. Or if you're checking in children for the very first time, that's where we get this number. We had 402 first time connections. That doesn't include all of the newcomers who walk in and don't fill out the thing. They're like, I, you are not getting my information. Like, we have a lot of those too. But this is a great reminder to me, and I would say for most of you who are regulars with us, that every single Sunday there are multiple families who are connecting with this church for the very first time. And we get to be a part of their journey of what Jesus is gonna do with them next. Whether they get plugged in here, whether they get plugged in somewhere else, but they get to rub shoulders with us. We get to be an ambassador for them as they are connecting for the very first time. And that happens every single week for, for countless numbers of people. So also we have 49 life groups all over the Quad City area, which include 455 People, really exciting. Uh, we launched a podcast uh, about almost two years ago now when we did the book of Romans because we knew we weren't going to be able to talk about everything in the sermon that we wanted to say. So we launched this podcast and it's been really cool to see this thing grow. We have about 500 people who listen to this podcast every week. And so if you have yet to jump into the podcast, Really encourage you to do that. We rebranded it, uh, and it's now called the uh, Becoming Better Podcast. So if you just go, wherever you get your podcast, look for Quad City. You can find this Becoming Better Podcast. It's a follow-up to our conversations on Sunday. In fact, if you ever walk out of here on a Sunday and you've got a question or a comment that you want to make related to the sermon, you can always submit it through the app to us, and we will address it on the podcast. And so it's a lot of fun and invite you to do that. We will be doing that throughout the book of James. And so wherever you find your podcast, dive in and join us. Let's get that number to a thousand. Be great. We also redid our app this year and we had 1100 app downloads, which is really amazing for a church our size. Would love for you. If you have not done that yet, make sure you download the app. Okay, uh, we had some people show up this morning at our eight o'clock service and they wouldn't have done that if they had the app, okay, because we can do some push notifications and let you know what's going on at the church. And so make sure you download the app. Uh, there's a lot of people who do it. And it's great. And in the app, there's these little, we call them badges that are right on the front page. Your app is personalized to you. And there's some little badges on there and that are indicators of steps that we think are important as we take, uh, uh, take steps to follow Jesus, to grow in our discipleship. And we saw 4,000 people light some badges over this year. 4,000 badges got lit over this last year. And so it's really cool to see people take steps in their discipleship journey. We hope you'll join us in that. In the beginning of 2023, February and March, we launched an initiative called Making More. This was an opportunity to, to see people grow in their ability to share their faith. These were people who raised their hand and said, I want to help fulfill the mission of Jesus to go make more disciples of Jesus, but I just don't know how. I don't know what the conversation should look like. I don't know what that should, how I can go about doing this in my daily life. And so we, we offered an environment on Wednesday nights, six weeks in a row, right here in this room, and we had over 400 people come and say, I wanna learn how to do that. And so that was so encouraging. Some of you were a part of that. I was reminded this morning as we were out shoveling snow that during the Making More, we had five of those and it was great, and then it snowed on the last one. So we had to reschedule it. And then it snowed that day too. Then we had to reschedule it. Then it snowed like literally three Wednesdays in a row. And finally we just said, okay, we'll record and it's online. So just so you know, we are going to be doing this again this year. So if, again, if you're one of those that say, I understand the mission that Jesus has given us and I want to do it. I want to know how to help people learn to follow Jesus. Then look for making more. We'll be launching that again this year. 
We also had 709 people who volunteered this year to make what we do here at Quad City happen. And so I just want to do a big shout out to all of you, whether it's in our kids ministry, our worship team, our uh, people who cook on Tuesday nights, ushers, greeters. It's so great that we have so many amazing volunteers who would not be able to do what we do without you. And right now I want to... I want to uh, share a special thank you to one specific volunteer, Art Olson. Come join me up here today. So for those of you who don't know, uh, Art is an old guy who's been around for a really long time. He's been a part of this church for 25 years, something like 26 years, I've been the lead pastor here for 15, and Art has served with me as an elder for over half of my time here at Quad City. And what you may not know, if you're a newcomer with us, what you probably do not know is that that there's no single person who's had more of an impact on Quad City being what it is today than Art Olson. That his leadership over the last 15 years is one of the greatest contributors of why this church is what it is. And scripture says that when we have people in our midst who are leading well, we are to honor those who are worthy of honor. And Art has been serving as an elder with us, and he is stepping off. uh, He just stepped off at the end of 23 as an elder, and so we wanted to take a moment and just honor him. And so we've got this little uh, plaque here, nice crystal glass uh, award that says, those who have served well gain an excellent standing and a great assurance in their faith in Christ Jesus. First Timothy 3.13. And Art, you have served well. I want to make sure that we honor him and you can honor him. And again, thank him for his serving us well, serving the Lord well. And we are grateful for you, my friend. Grateful for you too. No, 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 no. <laughs> But all of our volunteers, and many of you, I see a couple of volunteer kids shirts, all of you, like we could not do what we do without you. And so we're so grateful for all of our volunteers. Uh, How many of you were a part of Meal Pack this year? Anybody? Anybody? Got a few? That was a lot of fun. We got to do Meal Pack where we as a church cleared out this room and we packed 60,000 meals that were given to the Arizona Reservation Ministry and they were so grateful uh, to be able to take those meals and to pass them out to people who need and 420 volunteers came and participated in that and so we were really happy to be able to do that and we're going to be doing it again and so that will be coming up, you'll be hearing about that again, if you missed out then you missed out. On top of that, every week we share share about 100 meals out of our kitchen, that we have a community meal here between 40 and 50 people show up and eat here, but we also prepare meals that we deliver to other uh, environments where they can't cook for themselves. And so that happens every single week. We have some amazing volunteers who make that happen. And so uh, just so you know, you're a part of that. Every week when you give, you are a part of providing those for families in our community. And my favorite number every year is this number right here that we got to see right here in this baptistry over 100 people surrender their lives to Jesus in 2023. So, so good and so fun. First time we've hit triple digits. So I'm so excited about that. And may God continue to use us to bring people to himself. Now, again, as I said, All of these numbers are great. You should hear these numbers. You should get excited. You should celebrate with us and what God's doing. You're a part of these things. But all of this stuff is secondary to our mission. None of these things are our goal. Our mission is very simple. Our mission is that we are to be making more and better disciples of Jesus everywhere, always. That's the mission. 
It doesn't matter how much, how many meals that we send to the reservation. The question is, are we making disciples of Jesus? It doesn't matter how many kids we have in our student ministry. Are we making disciples of Jesus? Like we can gather crowds in this room every weekend, but that's not the mission. The mission is, are we making more and better disciples of Jesus? And whatever, however we evaluate our effectiveness, it has to be run through this filter. Is what we're doing helping to make more and better disciples of Jesus? So alongside this mission, we have Four core values that kind of help us be guided in how we're going to accomplish this. Because this mission is Jesus' mission for every church, but every church is going to do it a little bit differently. But there's some things that guide us in how we're going to fulfill this mission. These four core values. The first is that we're going to teach the Bible. Like when you come back next week, I'm going to say open to James chapter 1, and we're going to start there and just work through the Word of God. And we're going to teach the Bible. We're going to let it speak and get our uh, application from the very word of God. So this is a huge thing for us. The second one is we're going to do the hard things because when we teach the Bible, we recognize that it's not enough for us just to learn things that the Bible says. We actually have to go do the things that the Bible says. And if you're choosing to follow after Jesus, if you're actually going to become a disciple, it is going to require you to do things that are uncomfortable that you don't want to do. So we, we just say it out loud. If you're going to be a part of this church, one of our core values is that we do the hard things. We're going to put the word of God in to practice. Number three, we're going to multiply disciples. Again, we're not going to allow ourselves to become so insular that it's just about those who are here. The, the great commission is not just about us becoming better disciples. It's also about us making disciples. And so we have a role to play as followers of Jesus in helping other people to follow Jesus. So we're going to multiply disciples by becoming disciple makers. And then lastly, one of our core values is that we are better together. Following Jesus is a team sport, and, it, and it's always been that way. And here's what I can say with almost 100% certainty. If I were to listen to your story and where you are in your faith journey, I can say with almost certainty, 100% certainty, that the greatest growth moments in your faith journey is moments that were always connected with somebody else. Like it, our greatest transformation in following Jesus almost never happens in isolation. It almost always happens because we have somebody in our life who is, who's growing with us or growing us or walking alongside of us, challenging us, mentoring us, discipling us, confronting us, teaching us. It almost always happens in community because that's the way that God has designed it. So, These are our core values. They're the things that drive us. And everything that we do as a church should should be filtered through these. And that's what we want to be as a church. And so, as I think back to 2023, and I think about how did we do these core values? How do we do about making more and better disciples of Jesus? What was it that stood out in 2023 that helped us take steps in completing our mission? There were two initiatives that I introduced to our church one year ago today. One year ago on this Sunday, the first Sunday of last year, during our family meeting, I shared two initiatives to help us accomplish our mission. Last year, 2023, we had two initiatives that changed us as a church. Excel, and discipleship groups, okay? These two initiatives were born out of our leadership of elders who gather every year, and and they provided with us great clarity about who we are as a church. They were born out of the question, how do we best fulfill our mission to make more and better disciples of Jesus? And here's what we know. For many in our church, These two initiatives came with really, really 
hard expectations for people. Like these two initiatives were really difficult for some of our people. They came with some big asks. They came with some uncomfortable expectations. For many in our church, these two solidly fit into the categories of us asking them to do hard things. And it's just been so encouraging to me over the last year to see so many of you take these steps with us. But if I'm honest, there was, for me, there was some discouragement with this as well. There was some discouragement because when we offered up these hard asks for people, there were some people who decided, hey, I'm not, I just I don't want to be a part of that. When we gave some clarity on this is where we're going as a church, it gave some people the option to say, you know, I think I'm going to move into a different direction. In fact, chances are many of you know people who were once a part of our church or more a part of our church who for either one or both of these reasons, they stepped away doesn't make them bad people, doesn't mean they don't love Jesus. Many of them do, and they're passionately serving Jesus in other ways and other places in our community. Chances are there's even some of you who are watching right now who disengaged on some level because of, of these hard initiatives that we launched last year. And I get it. I really do get it. These initiatives came with big asks and hard expectations, and we knew We knew going in that both of these were going to uh, bring about a level of clarity that would cause people to say, I get it, and I don't think it's for me. And so I want to talk about these two today and share with you a little bit, remind us of of where we are with these and and what's happened uh, with these over the last year. Because again, these are the things that we're going to be doing moving forward. And we know that as we ask people to do hard things moving forward, every time we challenge people, there will be some people who choose not to go with us. And again, this is why we know our mission is not just to build crowds here. Because if, if the mission was to build crowds, we would not be doing this stuff. Okay, because here's what we all know. A faith that just invites people into believing things is way more appealing than a faith that invites people to do hard things because of what they believe. Let me say that again. I want you to hear me today. A faith that just invites people to believe things Like me just coming in and preaching messages and saying you need to believe this stuff. If I just preach messages inviting you to believe things, that's really easy for people to get on board with. What's more difficult to get on board with is preaching messages to say that you actually need to do hard things because of what you believe. One of those will grow you a crowd. One of them makes growing a crowd a whole lot difficult, a lot more difficult. But, but we're called to do the second. We're called to do hard things because of what we believe. Because that's where the greatest transformation happens in our life. And so, again, I want to share this morning around these two initiatives, where we've been and where we are today. So let's first start with the Excel. So Excel, for those of you who are newcomers with us, Excel is a, was a generosity initiative that we launched in the fall of 2023, where we ask everyone who is a part of Quad City to take a step to grow in the grace of giving. And we did that because we recognize that for us to fulfill our mission to become better disciples of Jesus, then we have to grow in the grace of giving. Because As we shared all throughout that sermon series, generosity is a discipleship issue. The closer you get to becoming like Jesus, the more generous you will become. Every single time. 
Those two things are intimately connected. And so we launched a two-year generosity initiative to help all of us, asking everyone to take a step to commit to growing in the grace of giving. So what we said, the number one goal of our Excel initiative was to have 100% participation from everyone who calls Quad City their church home. And that those people would make a commitment and take a step to grow in the grace of giving. Knowing that if we take that step and we actually become better disciples of Jesus and that's reflected in our generosity, then that will fuel and fund our ability to make more disciples of Jesus. To, to help us to, to get to our secondary goal which was to generate $14.5 million of kingdom resources over the next year, over the next two years, to help us make more disciples of Jesus, specifically in Prescott Valley. So here's how we said we were gonna use those $14.5 million. That those $14.5 million over the next two years, six million of those would fund our budgets both for the campus here in Prescott and in Prescott Valley. So about three million a year is what it takes for us to do all the things that you know and love about Quad City Church. And so that's where the, the where six million of it goes. Another million we committed to giving away, to leveraging our ministry partners that we've been utilizing both locally, regionally, nationally, and internationally. We want to be a church that is generous with other ministries. And so we want to fund them. And over the next two years through this initiative, we're going to give a million dollars away to fund other ministries. We're going to take a half a million dollars, 500,000, and grow the capacity here at our Prescott campus, not that we need it today, but we're going to build a balcony. If you were here at Christmas and you were a part of that 11 o'clock service at Christmas, we had 60 or 80 people who could not get into the room for our Christmas services. So we're going to add a balcony here in the back of this room with this initiative. And then lastly, we're going to take all the money that's left from that 14.5 and we're going to leverage it to begin constructing our campus out in Prescott Valley. So for those of you who don't know, we have a campus there already that's meeting at the middle school. Uh, we've purchased eight acres of land and we are raising these funds to build out that campus so that we can make more disciples in Prescott Valley for decades to come. So this was the uh, Excel initiative. So let me quickly give you a few updates on each of these four, all right? Unfortunately, I was not able to convince all of you to join me on this journey to get to 100% participation here, okay? But so many of you have, and I'm so grateful. And they've actually trickled in over the last few months. We've had 528 people who, I'm sorry, 528 pledge cards given, which represents 475 households. So that's a lot of you who have made commitments to step forward and to grow in the grace of giving. So, so grateful for you. And it, we've already begun to see God using those funds, and I'll share a little bit about that in a minute. The expected and committed funds that we are anticipating has continued to grow even since we shared this number with you at the end of our Excel sermon series. And it is now up to nearly $13 million that has been committed and expected over this two-year initiative. Now, I just need you to know that's a huge number. It's a huge number. In fact, it we set a really high goal. In fact, we set a goal that was higher than the smart people who were helping us to figure this stuff out. We set a goal higher than, than they said was wise because I'm not wise. And so here's the cool thing though. I think that we're still gonna get to our goal of 14.5 over the next two years. We've already seen this continue to grow. 
In fact, in the first three months that we've been uh, collecting Excel commitments, we've already seen over $2 million that has been given through the Excel initiative just in the first three months. Now, we don't anticipate that every three months. We knew some of you front-loaded some of that, and that's great, but that, that commitment is still continuing to grow each and every month. And imagine what will happen when the rest of you join us. The, he's a plant. So, so how are we doing with each of the components of the Excel initiative? Let me break down all four of them real quick with you. Our general budget, it's great. We, we anticipate next year ending somewhere around the $3 million mark. And so that's where we expect to be. A uh, couple of things that went into our general budget this year that I thought would be exciting for you to hear, specifically those of you out in Prescott Valley this morning, is one, uh, we were able to bring Corey Hewitt on as a full-time staff member. Yeah. So you got a fan club. That's so good. So Corey, for those of you who don't know, actually grew up in our church, went off to Bible college, and he came back and was doing a, uh, been a resident on our team for about the last 18 months. And then we sent him out to Prescott Valley, and he's done an amazing job of helping to shepherd our campus out in Prescott Valley. And so we brought him on full time, and so he is now the official associate pastor of our Prescott Valley campus. So make sure that you congratulate Lake Corey. Uh, he's taking up part of our $3 million budget this year. So excited about that. The second thing that we're excited about is that out in Prescott Valley, we have decided to go ahead and begin leasing some space for a permanent office in Prescott Valley for our Prescott Valley campus, which will also double as some ministry space. Will give us an opportunity to do ministry with students and adults seven days a week in Prescott Valley. So we're working on getting that finalized and hopefully we'll uh, have some news for you in the coming weeks and months for those of you in Prescott Valley. But we're really excited about utilizing some space and creating a home base in Prescott Valley for our campus there. So that's the general budget. Uh, the second component is our outreach that we're gonna give $500,000 away in the first year and 500,000 in the second year. And because... Uh, Excel launched at the end of 23, we were actually able to go ahead and begin utilizing some of those funds already. And one of the places that we were able to give some of that money is to our ministry partners in Japan. So we've been supporting a, a church planning organization in Japan for nearly 15 years. They're doing an amazing job and we've gotten to be a part of it. One of the, uh, the pastor and his wife, the wife is from this church and they've been doing ministry over there for nearly 15 years and we've gotten to be a part of it. And they outgrew, they planted a church in Tokyo last year and already outgrew the space and they were under the crunch to try to figure out how do we grow our capacity to reach people in Tokyo and they launched into a building initiative and ran out of funds and asked us to help and we were able to cut them a check for $75,000 and I just want to give the pastor, his name's Jay Greer, an opportunity uh, to say his own word of thanks to you. Hey Quad City, this is Jay Greer with Mustard Seed Network coming to you from Tokyo, Japan, and I'm standing in the entryway of our brand new facility, and you have given and sacrificed in big ways to help us to move into this facility right in the heart of Tokyo. And there's a bustling street out there full of people, and then just down the stairs, down this hallway, there are people right now uh, hearing the word of God being preached. And so we are so thankful for the way that you partnered with us uh, just this past week. Uh, we had nearly 300 people in this uh, in this uh, facility a gathering here, hearing about Jesus at Christmas. Uh, it was it was Christmas Eve, and a ton of people came in because we had room for them, and you helped us to make room for them to come in. So we are incredibly thankful for you guys and the impact that you're making. Uh, that is having ripple effects all around the world, and we're experiencing the blessing here in Tokyo, Japan. So continue to pray for us. Pray for the 99% of Tokyo that doesn't know Jesus. And 
pray for the people that are gathering here in this facility. Thank you so much. It's your generosity that allows us to do that, and it is having eternal ripple effects all around the world, and I'm so grateful for all of you. The third component uh, of, the, of our Excel was cr- to create space here by building a balcony here at our Prescott Auditorium. And just so you know, uh, all of those plans are done. They're underway. They've gone through the city. We've got the stamp. Uh, we are going to be seeing that construction happen in the next few weeks. And so you're going to come in. It'll be a little dusty and dirty. Uh, mind the mess. It's going to be great. Uh, but that is going to be happening just in the next few weeks. So we're really excited to see that project begin. Lastly, let's talk about Prescott Valley. Again, we've done all of the work of building, I'm sorry, buying the land, making initial drawings. We're working with our architects and engineers. We're doing everything that we can with the town of Prescott Valley. It's a bit of a slow process. I don't know if you've ever tried to build anything. It's a bit of a slow process. So uh, we're doing our best because of, again, because of your generosity and your giving so far, we have enough money to begin doing some work out in Prescott Valley. So the funds are, are here. We're trying to push that project forward and we're gonna keep going as fast as we can. It's just going a little slower than we'd like. But we're doing what we can there, PV. Hang in there, we're coming. All right. So those are the four components. And again, we're so grateful for all of you who've taken a step to grow in this grace of giving. Because I, again, I just want to make sure that we remember this. The number one goal is, is to grow in the grace of giving because we know when we do that, it makes us better disciples of Jesus. And that's what we want for you. So we want for all of you, and it's not too late for you to join us. You can still make a commitment to join us on this journey. Let me say again, I know that it is a big ask. I know it is a difficult, hard step for many of us. I know that this is not something you do if you're trying to grow a crowd, but it is absolutely something that we do if our mission is to make more and better disciples of Jesus. And so that's why we're leaning into these initiatives. And I hope you'll join us. Now, let's talk about the second one. The second one was our discipleship groups. Last year, at this time, I got to share with you this discipleship pathway, okay? So this was a a way for us to try to intentionally form environments that help people to become better disciples of Jesus, Okay, so we wanted to say, how does someone get connected to our church wherever they are on their faith journey? How is it that they can get connected and grow as disciples of Jesus and get better at following Jesus? And so we came up with this discipleship pathway. Okay, and here's the big end of the funnel. All right, so this is how most people get connected with us for the very first time. It's through online and through outreach. So this could be somebody joining us online for the very first time. We know that long before people show up to an environment here, they will often spend several weeks connecting with us online. They'll watch past sermons or join a live stream, but they wanna know how crazy we are before they show up. Okay, that's part of this journey. And so this is them for the very first time. Or outreach, and this could be outreach because you have reached out to people, or it could be outreach through things like a candy crawl event where people get connected in the big end of the funnel for the first time. So that's the great place to start, but you're not gonna grow as the disciple very long if this is all you do. Better option than just being online is to share with us in a worship service, to join us in person. Because again, God created us, the church, to be a community. And so better than just watching by yourself on an iPad in your pajamas, which I know many of you are doing that today, better than that is to show up. Because it's here that you get to see that you're not alone. There are other people and you get to know names and some faces. And so that's a better, it's a better option. You're going to grow more that way. But again, there's even more better options than that. Break it down a little further. 
to where we have connections events, men's breakfast, women's brown bag, women's events, discovering Quad City. All of these are environments where the crowd goes from two, three, and 400 people down to 50, 75, 130 Again, where you can start to get around some tables, where you can actually begin to interact with people, where there's greater intimacy and relational connection. And again, because God created us to grow together, we have to find these environments. And so you're going to have a better chance of growing as a disciple, getting in an opportunity Getting in an environment where you have the opportunity to look at people's faces instead of just sitting in rows, staring at the back of the head of the person in front of you, okay? But even better than just these connections events, which happen regularly, monthly, is to get into a life group. Life groups are weekly environments where you're in somebody's living room most often, where it's typically made up of 8, 10, 12 people who are getting into the word of God together, praying together, who are, who are sharing spiritual realities and truths together, uh, mostly based on sermons that we hear and how do we apply this stuff to our life. And these happen on a weekly basis, okay? And they're all over the Quad Cities. And, and this is an environment where you're gonna get to know people even more. Or they're going to hear your story. There's a greater level of relational connection and transparency. Now, these happen two sessions, typically one in the spring, one in the fall. Imagine how much greater your connections are going to be if you're in one of these environments 25 times a year. Like your relational capacity, your growth opportunities continue to rise. And this is where our discipleship pathway used to end. It was kind of, that was it. And it was, it was when we went on an elders retreat and we asked the question, specifically thinking about our life groups, are they actually producing the kind of disciples that we feel like God's calling us to? Do we find in these environments the kind of relational transparency and intimacy and accountability that are actually helping people put the word of God into practice? And we kind of had to give ourselves a, a not great grade on that. And so, so what can we do that's better? And that's where I shared with you last year the idea of discipleship groups. And discipleship groups are, are groups that are four to five people, gender specific, that meet every week and they meet long term. Like this is a long term commitment where we've asked people to commit to doing this for 18 months to three years. And it starts off by diving into the deep end of the pool. It starts off with some, some real transparency because we know that there are things that happen in people's lives that never get talked about in life groups. And so we need environments to whereby we can actually share our lives with other people, okay? We all need a place where we're known and we're loved. We need a place where we can experience the promises of God through other people, we need a place where we can actually confess our sin and receive God's grace. We need a place where we can be honest with our struggles. We need a place where we can be prayed for, a place where we can be challenged, a place where somebody's gonna rebuke us. We need a place where we can learn the word of God, but not just learning it so that we know something, but we actually learn it in community in a way that helps us to go do something. We believe this is the kind of community that Jesus intended for his church. And the goal is that we want everybody in our church to take a step on this discipleship journey. This isn't where it ends. There's a couple of other ones. One-on-one uh, -on -one discipleship, if you've ever done CTO with us, that's, that would be an opportunity right there to grow even more. Ultimately, we want everybody to get to the place where they become a disciple maker. All of this is about us becoming a better disciple. At some point, we need to get to the bottom of this funnel and become disciple makers who leverage what we've learned to grab people to help them go down the funnel. Like this is ultimately what we need to be doing. But again, we want it to be normative that if you're a part of Quad City, you are at least right here. 
We want it normative that everybody is in a discipleship group because we believe this is the greatest place for us to be transformed into the likeness of Christ. The further down this funnel you go, the higher the accountability, the greater the transparency, and we believe the most, the, the greatest opportunity for transformation. Here's what we know. Well, let me back up. Let me back up. Do you remember the great commission that Jesus gave us? Right? It is the foundation of our mission statement. I want to remind you again, this is Jesus' expectation. Jesus gave us the... I'm going through that. I, got, I ain't got time. Matthew 28. Therefore, go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you, and surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. This is the bottom of the funnel. Go make disciples. Okay, this is what we're called to do. It's your call, my call. Okay? This is how we make more disciples. But here's how we make better disciples. To teach people to obey everything that Jesus has commanded us. This is the expectation. Note that Jesus doesn't say, teach them everything I've commanded. He says, teach them to obey everything I've commanded. This is what becoming better disciples of Jesus looks like, is us growing in our obedience. Being a disciple isn't just about knowing more things. It's about doing what we know. Again, here's what we know. If you choose to stay at the top of that funnel and you're just doing the online thing and you're just coming into this room on Sundays and that's kind of the gist of your journey, you're gonna find yourself in, uh, in environments where you are learning new things with little expectation that you'll actually do anything with what you've learned. There's this thing in us as Christians, most Christians, you ask them, we love teaching. We love good teaching. We love good preaching. I love it. I love good teaching. I love it when I find it in a book or a podcast or a sermon. We love it. We love good teaching. But the problem for too many of us is that we enjoy learning about the Bible more than we enjoy obeying the Bible. We want to know new things without the expectation of actually doing anything new. We want the inspiration of being taught without the application of what was taught. But becoming a better disciple of Jesus requires us to obey Jesus. And our leadership has become convinced the greatest opportunity for the greatest number of people is going to happen through discipleship groups. But I don't want you to just take my word for it. I want you to hear a story of a couple of people who took this journey with us over the last year. My name is Tammy Joseph, and I've been attending Quad City for about 20 years. I'm Jake Wright. I've been attending uh, Quad City. Our family's been attending for over 10 years. I first heard about discipleship groups uh, at the Vision Night. And Melody says, hey, we're going to do discipleship with Ruth and Kathy. Do you want to join? And so I was like, okay, I'll let you know, because I was a little hesitant because it is every week and that's it's a huge time commitment. Yeah, I was approached um, by Anthony, who kind of made the first phone call to me, like, is this something you'd be interested in? And uh, I said, absolutely. And he said, do you know some other guys that might be interested? And I said, I do. Um, so I made a few phone calls and um, before the end of the day, we had a group of five guys that was going to be meeting the next day. Um, but in my head, my my I was it was going say yes, just say yes, just go ahead and say yes, and so I did, and it's the best thing that ever happened to me. I was born and raised going to church, so the church wasn't anything new to me. Um, but being involved in a small group was kind of like a much more dynamic experience, much more um, rubber meets the road type experience. In our group, we ask a hard question every week, sometimes two or three hard questions. And that question could be, um, what have you done this week that you're embarrassed about? Questions like that, that um, make me stop and think and examine my life and be real with, with what I've done that I shouldn't have done. And sharing that with other men has allowed me to 
not just be more real, but it actually like keeps you more accountable throughout the week, like because you know you're going to be reporting to your brothers. You know, I, I learned so much from them and they have helped me to be able to talk about things that I never ever felt comfortable talking about before. These guys are like-minded believers, so they they aren't afraid to challenge each other. We're not afraid to um, give hard advice. We're not afraid to like share kind of stuff that looks dirty to other people with our with these guys because um, we can trust them. This last year has been particularly rough. I truly think that if I didn't have the discipleship group and learned how to handle things and react to things and let God take care of things that my marriage probably wouldn't have lasted. A pastor can teach and can shepherd, um, but you need men that you can literally sit face to face with and share things about your specific life, um, who, can, who can listen to that and then respond with godly advice. I feel like it's counseling, but it's personal because you're with people who love you and care for you and they're there to they're just there to lift you up and to help you get through everything and it's just it's they're just they'll always be lifelong friends i think if people committed to being in a group like this and were fully 100 percent in i think it would be something that would change their life this has been a very very beneficial change agent in my life for sure this group has meant everything to me. It is, it's just, it has brought, it's brought life to me. I really hope that everybody has the opportunity to experience this because you will not regret it. So we launched these last year. And the cool thing is we've had 42 groups like this that have formed, which encompass about 180 people. And this is amazing to see this kind of engagement so far. But this is far from where we want to be because this is, this is the environment where we feel like God's going to do the greatest work in us. And so I just want to challenge you to take this hard step. Again, we want this to be the norm. If you're a part of this church, you're going to be in one of these environments. Again, it is a big ask. It is a hard step. And I know, again, this is not something you do if you're simply trying to grow a crowd, but it is absolutely something you do if you're trying to help people become better disciples. And so I hope that you're going to join us. So how do you do it? Real simple. You just raise your hand and say, I want to do it. I want to be in an environment like that. You can do it through the app. You can stop at Connection Central. The hardest part of this is just committing to do it, just to say, I want to be a part. We're going to be doing some training over the next few weeks to help you take a step to form a group like this. But again, the hardest part is just going to be making the commitment to do it. So we want to encourage you to take that step. This year, we don't have any new initiatives. We just have the clarity of what God's already called us to, and we're just inviting everybody, let's take a step to keep growing, to making more and better disciples of Jesus. Let me pray. Father, we are grateful for today, for an opportunity to be reminded of what you've called us to. And I pray that for all of those who are in the rooms here in Prescott and Prescott Valley and watching online, God, that you would help them know what their next step is as we all strive to become better disciples. In Jesus' name, amen.